Hi, right, this is Bob from Whamus Tech, and today we're going to continue on with our Gamify Your Glide app. This will be episode number 12, Player Classes. If you're not familiar with Player Classes, this is another name for player archetypes or types, right? This is your hunter, your mage, your warrior, your, um, your spellcaster, your healer, things of that nature, right? And each of these different classes might have a different role or a different way to engage in your gamified classroom. So let's get to it. First thing we're going to do is create that player sheet. So we're going to come over here to our spreadsheet, add a new sheet, and we'll call this one classes. Right. And some columns that we might want here. Uh, let's see, we'll have the actual class name, maybe the class image, right, uh, description, maybe some keywords for this particular class. Now, every player type has their own particular type of statistic, right, that you track throughout the game. And usually you have items that can boost these statistics throughout your game as well. And uh, some of the three most popular ones are probably like strength or attack. Then you have something like uh, health or defense. I'll say health. And then something to do with probably magic, right? You have, um, let's say, spell damage, something of that nature. All right. So some classes, I think the probably some of the most popular ones are like healer, warrior, hunter, um, mage or a spellcaster, right, and your healer. And I have some images already, let me find these real fast. I'm going to grab these. I also have descriptions for all of these as well, and keywords, look at that. All right, so my descriptions. So when players are choosing their um, what class they want to be, they can read the description. They can also see the keywords, what their strengths are, right? So they can make a better, more educated choice as to what class they'd like to be. And then you set your statistics, right? So typically, um, when you're talking about like attack damage. Right, just physical brute strength. Typically, your mages and your healers are less, and your warriors and your hunters maybe are more. Uh, when it comes to health, uh, typically your spellcasters have less health than your warriors do. Right, and spell damage. Well, your warriors and your hunters won't have any spell damage, so this gives your mages and healers a, a little a little boost here. Right, um, even though they're weak on health and attack. And what I try to do is kind of average everything out to like the number 15. So here's 7 plus 8 is 15, 7 plus 8 is 15, right, and so forth. These are all equal to 15. So everybody has the same base stats, just allocated differently. All right. I think that's all we need to do for this portion. All right, so then we're going to come back to our app, give our sheet a refresh. And now we can add a new tab here for our classes. All right, so just like we did with our ranks and our guilds, add another tab over here in our tucked away menu called classes. So I'm going to add a new tab and we'll call this classes. And it's going to reference that classes sheet. And the features should be only when their profile is true, right? So it has profile is true. All right, and let's add this underneath the ranks. All right, so now we have our classes. Oh, we need a better icon than that. What in the world? That's abysmal. All right, what kind of, what kind of icon should we have? Uh, something like a banner or a badge or a shield or something. Let's look up shield. Let's see what we get. These aren't bad. Ooh, I like this one right here. This one's it. Found on the first time. All right, this is our our classes. Nice. It's not reusing it anywhere, right? Nope. Perfect. All right, let's navigate to our classes tab, and it already gives us the list layout. But if you want to change that, I like to use the cards layout or probably the tiles layout, maybe. Let's see. Uh, let's try cards, and let's split it up, and let's show the full image. Ooh, not bad, not bad. All right, let's do square. There we go, that looks better. All right, so we have the name and we have a description here. Let's make the actual details the description. 
Um, we can make that the hut. Yep. And then the title can be like the keywords, something like that. That looks good. Cool. All right, and we don't need this favorite. I don't know why this is there. Maybe we have to dive into this and turn that off. Yeah, why do I have it being favorited? All right, let's scrap all this. There we go. Now that went away. I don't know. All right, so we have our warrior, hunter, mage, and healer. And now we have to set the details view for each of these. And it means pretty simple. We'll just have an image and then some text. And then we'll showcase our stats as well, right? So let's do and just an image. That looks fine. Uh, let's do, I'll show the whole image and let's make it smaller slightly. Uh, let's add some text. And this should be the uh, description. That looks fine. And now let's do our stats. So let's do a basic table and we'll call this base stats. And we'll just add in those, those, those items here. So we have our attack, we have our health, and we have our spell. Eight, seven, and zero, fine. And we can make this a little friendlier. Maybe we add some emojis, right? So when I think attack, I think sword. So look up a sword, fine. When I think health, I think a heart. Great, and then when I think spell, uh, maybe a sparkly lightning bolt, crystal ball. Let's do crystal ball, the genie. <laughs> okay, uh, let's have, we'll just paste that in and then delete the ones that we don't want. So here's our spell, there's our health. Oh, I have a black heart, I don't want a black heart. What did I do that for? I want a red heart. Didn't I choose a red heart? I guess I did, I want that one instead. There we go. And we'll add a space after each of these. Yeah, that looks better. All right, so we can see our attack, our health, and our spell. Beautiful. All right, now we have to have the ability to uh, choose our, uh, our choose our class, right? Now, probably should have done this in the onboarding tab, right? Uh, but we can kind of fake that right now. So to gain access to our onboarding tab, we have to change that tab visibility, right? So we'll come over here to our tab visibility and temporarily we're gonna to come to our onboarding tab and set the tab visibility to nothing. Or remember what it is where it says has profile is not true. Okay, so I'm gonna get rid of that tab visibility and now I see my onboarding tab is at the bottom here and now we can continue. All right, so I think all we have to do is just duplicate this choose a guild, but we'll make it apply to our classes. All right, so we cloned it. We're going to make our sheet the classes sheet now. The value will be the class. Awesome. And then the column will be our class column. There we go. So now our classes are in here, and we'll say select a class instead. Any features in there? Nope. Good. All right, now we have to change our two buttons, our incomplete button should also now take into fact that I have not yet selected a class. So I need where class is empty. All right, so now that's showing up, that's good. And we want this one to hide when class has not been selected. So I need to add that to our button filter as well, where class is not empty. Is not empty. There we go. And now we can select a class. Now our players might want to see what the classes are prior to selecting one, right? So we can add a link or a button here that says C class types, right? So I want to add a button and we'll see it says C or view class descriptions, something like that. And let's make this the very far simple button. So it looks just like a, like a link here, right? And the features for this will be to um, link to screen. And this will be the classes. So I'll make this title say classes. Okay, and the data will be the classes sheet. All right. 
So now they can see the classes sheet, even though they can't see anything else in our app, theoretically. All right, this button should probably be underneath the see a class, All right? So I can choose healer, but if I want to see the class descriptions, now I can see the class descriptions. And again, you'll need to, because you did a link to screen, you'll have to format this screen as well. Every time you do a link to screen, you have to uh, reformat that screen, unfortunately. I don't know why this is still there. Whatever. All right, back. So now they can see the class descriptions. Ooh, I want to be a hunter, let they say. So they can be a hunter and then complete profile. All right. So now the prof oh, profile has been completed. And now my <laughs> profile was incremented by more than one. All right, so now let's add our tab visibility back. So tabs, here, where? has profile is not true. There we go. All right, so now we have our name, we have our rank, we have our XP, we now we need to display our class, right? Um, we can do that in a variety of ways. When I add a tag up here, we can, right? So if I come over here to my layout view and I come to my, um, where is it? Not in the screen. I'm still on my my profile inline list. Okay, so here I can add my tag to be my class, like that maybe. That's one way to do it. Now you also want to probably display your stats, right? So I'm going to do another inline list. I'm sorry, another basic table down here as well that's going to display my base stats. But to do that, I have to do a relation from this uh, class that I chose to the class that I uh, that already exists in the sheet. So I'm gonna come over here to my data editor and under my user profile here, I'm now gonna add a column. I'm gonna call this relation to class, column type, relation. It's gonna be a single relation because I only have one class type. And it's gonna be where class matches the values in, Classes, boom. So now it says that I'm a hunter, perfect. And so now I can start bringing in those stats, right? So I'm gonna add a column, and I'm gonna add in a column for each of those three stats. So I'll say something like base attack, and this will be a lookup of my relationship to class, and then attack, just like that, done. All right, so let's go ahead and do the other two. So we're also gonna do a lookup. It's a little shifty thing that it does. Oh my goodness, all right, so lookup. And they'll call this base health. Yeah, lookup, and we're gonna grab the relationship to class health, done. And if only there was a clone column here. I've been asking for it for months. Still don't have it. Come on, glide. All right, it's so a base spell. Roll, look up, not roll up, look up, spell, done. All right, cool. Now we can display this information. All right, uh, before we display it though, I wanna do a couple other things here um, in relation to how we can boost our stats throughout the game. Now, typically whenever you craft an item or you uh, purchase an item, Sometimes that item comes with a boost to your stats, right? And so wouldn't it be neat that if I have that item in my inventory, that those stats also get boosted uh, to my class stats. So uh, let's go ahead and build that in now as well. So I'm gonna come over here to my sheet, come over here to the store where all of our items live, right? You might also have to do the same thing under the crafts possible as well, right? Um, yes, so we're going to create some stats here, and then we'll need to create some stats in our crafts possible. We're going to do a relation to those lookups and relationships to those items, 
uh, we'll look ups of them and then bring them in eventually into our user profile. So a little complicated, but bear with me here. So the first thing here under the, uh, under the store, we're gonna call this um, uh, an increase for each, right? So let's say attack increase or bonus or boost. Boost is shorter. All right, attack boost, health boost, and then spell boost. And not everything has one, right? Uh, just so I can see what I'm working with here, I'm gonna freeze that row. All right, so lumber shouldn't give me anything, right? Linen and nothing. All right, uh, paper nothing. Well, maybe paper gives you a one spell boost because now you have paper to write your spells on or something. Fine. Uh, steel will give me a one attack boost and a one health boost. Uh, leather. Let's have it hey, be one health boost. And then mind control will be a two spell boost. Cool. All right, I'm going to just copy these and bring them over to my crafts possible as well. Paste those in. So um, let's see, a tent should give me some health boost, right? Because I'm like restoring myself. So I'll give myself a two health boost and a shirt should give me one health boost. Now we have to add those boosts into our transaction log because that's what our user profiles are referencing in terms of which items are in our inventory. There's two ways to do this. Either one, you can write them out here, attack boost, health boost, increase boost, and then go back and retroactively add all those numbers in per person. If you wanna go that route, which seems kind of daunting. Uh, but the benefit of that is then you can uh, manipulate those at will throughout the game. So, you know, if you feel like so-and-so needs a, a certain boost, you can change their one to a two and they get an extra health boost or something like that, right? Um, but it is a little messy on, in the spreadsheet. So what I recommend doing is just doing a lookup and grabbing those boosts from those two sheets into this transaction. Uh, and because we're doing it in two different places, our crafted items as well as our bought items, we'll need to bring in both and then do an if then to see what kind of item it is. So let me show you how to do that. In our data editor, in the transactions, we need to create three different uh, sorry, we need to create two relations. We need to create a relation to um, the craft item and then a relation to the store item. I believe we already have each of them. We just have to now grab the lookups of those items. Let me just verify that we have them already. So I'm gonna do a lookup and the relation, we have a relationship to the shop, perfect. And then we have a relationship to crafted item, perfect. All right, so we can see here our boosts are already there. And now we just have to grab them. We have to grab them each. So we have to do six lookups, okay? So we're gonna call this, um, that's we attack boost shop. Copy that. And it's we have relationship to shop, attack boost. All right, so this is, um, you see here the number for the attack boost for any item that we purchased. I'm gonna do another lookup. I'm gonna call this a ta uh, let's see, health booth boost health boost shop. Um, again, relationship to shop. This is the health boost done, and then this will be the uh, last lookup here, and this will be our spell boost shop. Relationship to shop. Sp Spell boost. All right, so now we have some numbers here. We see these blanks, right? These blanks have to do with um, either maybe it's a card pack or it was a crafted item, right? So now we have to grab the three columns for our crafted items. So I'm gonna add another column here. Again, it's gonna be a lookup. And this is going to be attack boost craft. I'll copy that. Relationship to crafted item, boost. There we go, see how it filled in those spaces because this is a crafted item and not a shop item. 
health boost craft. So look up of the crafted item. Ugh. Crafted item. Health boost. And lastly, our spell boost. So this is a lookup of our crafted item spell boost. All right, so now we have these two entities. We either have it being part of the shop or we have it being part of the craft and we have to merge the two. So uh, you can do this a variety of ways. Uh, you can do a, um, an if then to say, hey, if this is empty, then do this, otherwise this, right? Or you can do a math column where you're just doing this plus this. And instead, we'll do an if then else. So we'll say if <laughs> attack boost. All right, so this will be an if then else instead. All right, so if attack boost shop is empty, then we'll do the attack boost craft else attack boost shop done all right so here we see that we have some one and a nothing all right so we have a one that works okay so here we'll do now um if health boost be an if then else again if health boost shop is empty then health boost craft else health boost shop done okay and then lastly we'll do our spell boost so if spell boost if then else all right if the spell boost shop is empty then spell boost craft else spell boost shop done okay so now we have our crafted items as well as our um, purchased items and the only blanks we see here are probably for those card packs that we bought which doesn't offer anything. So not even worth putting, I guess you can put zeros in there if, if you want that too, you know. Just to kind of keep things consistent here, we can do that. And now all of those blanks should go away and be zeros instead. There we go. Now the last thing we have to do is get a roll up of all of the stealth uh the the stats boost in our user profile luckily we already know what items are in our profile based on our relationship to the uh, is in inventory so we can just use that relation to create some roll-ups so i'm going to add a column here and i'm going to call this attack boost copy it and this is going to be a roll-up where we're rolling up the values of our items in inventory. Again, this is marking this uh, relation was any item that is marked true uh, as part of our if then else in the transaction log. So these are only pertaining to items in our inventory and we're gonna grab our if attack boost by calculating the sum. All right. So it looks like I don't have any items in my inventory that give me an attack boost. Fine. I'm going to do the same thing for health boost and for spell boost. So we'll say health boost. And be a roll up of our items in inventory health boost by calculating this sum. 
All right. So I have one item that's giving me a two health boost. And lastly, we're going to do our spell boost. So column type will be a roll up, summarizing the values of items in inventory spell boost by calculating the sum. Done. So I have. Even though I'm a hunter and my hunter doesn't have base spell to it, I am getting a spell increase because I have those mind control cards. If you want to really prevent your users from uh, having any sort of spell boost because of their class, uh, there's a couple of ways you can do that. Either one, you can prevent them from ever purchasing those types of items based on their class, right? Or what you could do here is say, I have an if then else for each of these three columns to say, hey, if class equals hunter, then attack equals zero, right? Or spell will always be zero and just kind of null it out, right? Um, or if, um, I guess because, yeah, uh, let's say you have like armor, right? And your spell casters don't have armor. Well, you can say if class equals mage, then um, that column equals zero, that if then else column equals zero. And then you use that as your base stats always, rather than the, this uh, lookup value. That's an option, okay? All right, so we have our base value, and now we have our increase. So now we just got to add them together to get our total stats, right? So we need to do one for each of our stats again here, right? So we'll say total attack. And this would be a math column where we're going to do base attack, base attack, plus attack boost, and a precision will just be one. All right, we'll create two more. So do a math column. This would be a health boost. Sorry, uh, total health. Math column where we have base health plus health boost. Precision one. Cool. And then we have our spell boost or a total spell if then else no uh, math where we have our space spell plus spell boost precision one all right so i have seven eight and zero my base stats because of the fact that i'm a hunter plus my stats that I brought in from my transaction log to give me my total stats here. All right, so now we have to display this in a way that makes sense. So what you might wanna do is show like your total and then what constitutes that total. So I'm gonna do something like this. I'm gonna add in a template column here called stat display. Um, or maybe, uh, so we'll do one for each because that's what we're doing here, right? So we'll say attack display. So a lot of columns here. That's what I was kind of talking to you about before, right? Um, but it works. So could you imagine creating all of this in the spreadsheet, how messy that would look, right? So here we just have it in our Glide data editor so our spreadsheet's nice and clean, right? All right, so let's create a template column here. And maybe we have our total attack. And then in parentheses, we have our, um, our base plus our boost. All right, so capital B for boost, I guess. We need some replacements here. We have our total, base, and boost. So this will be total attack, which is our base attack, plus our boost attack, boost, like that. There we go.
All right, and let's add another column. We'll call this health display. And again, this will be a template. We have T, B, plus big B. And those replacements, now for health, B, B. So we have total health, base health, and health boost. So yeah, that's looking good. All right, lastly, we have our spell display. And this will be our template. We have T, B plus B. Almost there, crossing the finish line. Total, not health. Ah! I hate when you click out of it. it. Makes you have to do the whole thing over again. Spell display. All right. Now we just have to display it all in our profile, finally. The fun stuff. All right, come back to your app here. And now you can display it however you'd like. I recommend just a table. So I'm going to add in a basic table component. And we can call this um, player stats. And here you can have, um, or if you want to, you can actually, this can be the name of your class. Right? Hunter. Your choice. Maybe the footer is the class. I, mean, I already have the class up there, I guess you don't need that. But anyway, so we're going to have our uh, attack display, our health display, and our spell display. Beautiful. Let's get rid of the word display. Let's get those emojis back again, huh? This is what I love about this Joy Pixels Chrome extension is that it remembers your recent ones here. So let's just click, 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 and then copy, paste. So attack, health, and spell. Cool. Probably want this above the badges, maybe below the guild. like so. And let's add a nice little separator in there. Kind of space things out a little bit. Yes. That's looking good. I like it. Separator. Let's get yeah. I think that looks good. So now you have your player stats, just like that. Now, the only thing we don't have on here is like a link to the image for your class type. So if you wanted to add that in there, you can under your basic table. Um, maybe that should have been the first one here. I wish you could rearrange things in here and you can't. So you could just have, so, Pretend this is your first row here, because so I don't have to go through all of it again. But you can say like you know class, or you can say like you know this is actually is the class, right? So class hunter, right? Followed by the oh we don't have the relation to the do we have that? We don't have that, do we? We do have the relation, we just don't have the image. All right, so in the data editor, last thing here, users add a column. Let's get the class logo here, right? The class image which is a lookup of the relationship to class image. Done. Because we want to display that. It looks fun to display, right? So here is the basic table. And we can display that class image. 
Hunter. Cool. Done. That's it. All right. So now we have our player stats based on our class. We have our class logo now. We have um, those stats being boosted because of items in our specific in our inventory. Right, just so you see how this works right now, I don't have any attack, right? Remember, steel gives me an attack plus one. So if I come over here in my inventory, I have one slot remaining. Let's go ahead and buy some steel. Uh, what you might want to do here, oh, you know what? Let's go ahead and do this too, because guess what? We're going to need to have that, right? Um, might want to show the stat boost here for this particular item, right? That'd be pretty important. So, all right, one last thing. Basic table, let's add this in here as well. So stat boosts, All right? We can add these in here. You might wanna do the same thing for the craft items as well. We have our attack boost, we have our health boost, and our spell boost. And again, I'll get rid of the word boost. I'm gonna add in those emojis. Spell didn't take too long. Oop. Clip you're redoing work because you delete everything. There we go. All right, so steel. It gives me that one attack boost here. All right, that might be under this basic table now. Like that maybe space these out a little bit. Medium. Like that. Stat boost, great. Let's purchase that item. Submit. So now in my profile, I should now have a stat boost of one, and you see that I do. Woohoo! So stat boosts from item stores now work as well as the crafted items, which is very cool. Uh, and now you'll be able to use this later on in your gamification environment where maybe you're doing boss battles, which is be for a future video. Stay tuned. And as always, thanks for watching.